Hey everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome. I am Lori Petro, founder of Teach Through Love. I'm here to talk about teenagers, you guys. Do you have a teenager? There was a question that was posted in the group about a, getting a young teenager to uh, brush their teeth. And it just, uh, it just struck me in my heart a little bit, so I wanted to jump on and talk about our teenagers. Hi, Shell. Thanks for joining me. Hi, Sandra. Nice to see you. If you're here, say hi. Tell me where you're joining us from. Um, like I said, I'm here to talk about our teenagers because like all the children, they hold a very special place in my heart. Um, and mostly, you know, like all children, they do. But also because they're at this age where it's like somewhere along the line before adulthood, we I feel like we stopped having a lot of faith in ourselves. And teenage, the teenage years are that time. It's such a delicate period, right? The, the early years are important and that's a delicate period because of the kind of brain growth. But also our teenagers, the brain growth that's, ha that's happening with teenagers is almost like what's going on with the little little ones and so that's why I wanted to come on and and talk to the speak about the question that was here hi Helen thanks for joining me um, and also if we have time you know maybe just chat and see what, what it's like but what is it like well let me ask let me start off hi Sharon thanks for joining me hi Katie you guys, so what is it like? You have teenagers. I have a 13 and a half year old, and if I left off that half, she'd be very disappointed. So um, we're on our way to 14. What, what about you guys? What do you have in your homes that you're, and how is it dealing with your, I shouldn't even say dealing, right? We're not dealing with, how is it living with your teenager? How is it, um, are you enjoying your teenager? Are you, uh, a teen and a tween, both boys. So you've got a couple, you got like one teen and then one right in the pipeline coming up. So you get a little practice before the next one. I was the oldest, so my parents did everything first on me and then it was like another six years before they had to do it again. So um, I definitely, I think that's probably why I feel for our teenagers because I know that we can be really hard on them and they're going you know they're learning how to live in the world just like everybody except that they now have a lot of maturity and they really recognize how very little maybe freedom that they have so um, Helen has uh, only seven but she's listening to prepare herself right on Helen get ahead of the game is always great Sandra also has a 13 year old boy stretching me, learning a ton. Yeah, I think our, our teenagers, just like our little ones, they we have to build our, our regulation, our stress tolerance, and then we sort of have it, like we're so busy between like five and 12, and then it's like, oh my gosh, they're so big, what do I do now? They, 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 they push back, they push back against uh, having their autonomy taken away a lot, I think, because it's it's taken so often um, if they're in school they're told what to do and where to sit and you know when to speak and all of these things so often but then even at home if we have a big family you know there may be a lot of responsibilities so it can feel um, they can feel burdened by all of that and it doesn't mean that it doesn't get done it's just that can we have empathy can we can we switch our perspective and look at it from our kids perspective that was one of the big things that I wrote down when I decided that I wanted to come on and talk to you guys. So, welcome. Thank you if you're listening to Prepare Yourself like Helen, or you're right in the thick of it like um, Sandra and Sharon is a 14-year-old, has all kinds of um, labels that are uh, describing his behaviors, and it sounds like he's very resistant, maybe has some anxiety and all kinds of things definitely going on. I want to tell you, hi, Cindy. Thank you for joining me. Sharon is saying picking battles and giving choices seems to help. Yeah, so that's definitely speaking to this idea that we want to give our kids autonomy, right? And I think that the biggest thing is that we just want to understand their perspective. Can we just take a moment and step back and think about what it must be like 
to live in a 13 year old body again um, and to live in a 13 year old world especially this one that has so much more like they have so much more access to the external world I feel like I was so sheltered you know, even though there was the explosion of, like, cable TV in the 80s and we got more than, you know, six channels finally, it wasn't this onslaught every day. My childhood was still spent very much, my, you know, my early childhood through age 12 was very much still spent uh, watching simple cartoons and playing outside. But kids today, they've got a lot to manage. So the question that made me think of all of this was um, the mom that had uh, a 13-year-old who's like does not want to brush his teeth. And I feel like part of this is definitely a stage, 13 in hygiene, like 11 to 14 in hygiene. It's really difficult. Would you guys agree? Anybody with older children that would agree that this can be something that we want them to understand the impact of their hygiene, not only on their own body, but on the others, you know, everybody else around them, whether it be strong, you know, strong odors in, from anywhere. We want to help our children understand the impact, right? <laughs> yeah, Sharon is saying awful, right? So we know that this is really, really important. We want our kids to develop the skills to take care of themselves. I think that's really what it is. It's not that, you know, I need my child to brush their teeth. I mean, it is, but overall, the long-term goal, if we could step back, if there's something between, let's ask, can I ask you, is there something between, like, think about that, who doesn't have challenges getting their kids to brush their teeth, especially with braces, yes, um, but think about, it. is there something between, I need them to absolutely do this hygiene thing, and... Oh my God, they're always going to smell. They're going to never brush their teeth. They're all going to rot out. They're going to fall apart. Like, I feel like that's the extremes. We're like, you either need to do it right now. Oh my gosh, it's never going to get done. Or you're going to have rotten teeth. And what am I going to do? It's going to cost me $10,000. Because let me tell you, these dentists are expensive. I do know this. Um, but that's a real fear. And it's one that I'm not asking you to take lightly. I just want to know if we can step back. Um... And just let go a little bit of what's triggering us in that moment. Maybe the fear. If that's happening for you. Which I know it happens. It definitely happens for me. Like Sandra's saying. With the braces, definitely. It's like, your teeth are going to have holes. That's what the dentist tells you. Orthodontist. They show, they show you those pictures. Right, Sandra? They're like, here are the holes that your children will have in their teeth. If you don't get them to brush them. So I'm, I know that parents, want, we want that. We need them to, to follow this. But... Um, Mama said something interesting in her in her message, and this is what I wanted to read. Um, so she said that he has a hard time submitting to my authority at times, and I feel like that's just they're having power struggles, right? I feel like authority. I I hope that we can think about it as not I have to make this person obey the rules, but I'm the leader. I want to help guide them into have into develop their skills into having. Um, a good relationship with us, but also a good relationship with their own, uh, their own self-care. That has to be important. I don't think it's just about, I need you to absolutely do this. It's very much about, I want you to be able to go into life and have these skills, as well as, of course, the rotten teeth we want to take care of. But th think about it, that won't happen in a week. That if we, if we just take um, a step back, just for a week, we can see um, maybe a little bit more. Let's just widen our perspective a little bit with the teenager. Uh, hi Jody, thank you guys for joining me. We're talking about teenagers if you are just jumping on. Um, and right now we're just trying to step back and look at the perspective. And something that struck me in this was, okay, so he's having a hard time doing that, but we want to maintain our leadership, right? We want our kids to follow our guidance. We want to make sure that they're developing their skills. Um, and she said, last night he was tossing a pillow in the living room and would, and would not stop when I asked him to. He made the comment yesterday at another time that he doesn't get to do what he wants to do in our house ever. So I just want to take a moment and acknowledge this because I know, and then I asked um, in the comments when I was responding, I asked, you know, let's talk about how do you manage it right now? What does it look like? 
What are, what's in place to help him monitor this activity? Because here's the thing, if it's just us running in and be like, did you brush your teeth? And they're in the middle of something or they're going to be like, yeah, I'm going to do it in five minutes. I'll just, I'll just yes you until you get off my back and go away. And of course, you know it hasn't been done because the toothbrush is still dry and all of that. And we walk in with a question we already know the answer to. Then yes, absolutely, it could be what you said. Is it about how I ask? So let's look at how do we ask? What I mean by self-monitor is, like, I gave my daughter in, in the mornings when things were challenging. She didn't like, when I would try to rush her or give her directions, it would just make her really stressed. And she would just get really rigid and inflexible. And then it would be like she was going slower and there was slow motion kind of thing. What I had to do is I had to hand over the responsibility to her and help her organize herself. So we, you, you said, you know, I'm not sure what that means, right? D here's the toothbrush and here's the toothpaste. You just do it. It's not something that you need to learn. But if we do what I was saying about widening our perspective, can we see how much children might have on their plate that that one thing that seems innocuous to them, because again, they can't necessarily see the long-term ramifications, so it does take a little bit of our support in there, but they're just not going to see the impact of it. They just don't have that ability yet, the foresight to be able to know what's going to happen and see ahead like that. So, but also they have so many things that they're trying to manage. Now, I don't know if your son goes to a school, so if he's in a regular school, but most kids are. So if we think about all day long, they're being told what to do. And then they come home and they just, you know, maybe he's working on um, he's, a, he's drawing or he's playing on a video, video game or he's doing whatever he's doing to relax and we come in with this question of did you brush your teeth? Is there a way that you can then maybe give him those reminders that doesn't maybe set off his resistance? Because a lot of the times it's us coming in and it's, it's sort of that we become the nag. And I know that we don't mean to be, I never wanted to be a nag, but I've heard it from my daughter. Not those exact words, but I can tell when me asking her repetitively even, or asking a question that maybe I already know the answer to. She doesn't know that I know the answer to, but it's just in a way that triggers her stress response. I'm not saying that I let her get away with it, but I started handing over the responsibility to her. So in the mornings to help us get out of the door on time, she used um, her own checklist that she used on a whiteboard. Um, at, di at the end of the evening when she was a little bit younger, maybe 11, 12, she was using um, timers in the bat. Well, she's a kid that really likes to like race and have timers and try to beat the clock kind of thing. So I worked with what works for her. You have to work and figure out what works with your kid. But that's, the, that's what I meant by self-monitoring. What does he do? Does he have a checklist of things that he gets done and he just checks it off and he sort of monitors it for himself? And he has full control over that. And then in a week, you check back. Maybe you notice when he's brushing his teeth. And then in three days, you check in with him about how that checklist is working. So that's what I meant by setting up a plan. Because something else that you said is, you know, I don't understand. It's like, it's just easy, right? But it's not so easy. If you have so many things on your plate, if you're worried about, you know, that relationship that you have with your science teacher and the test that you have tomorrow and you know that person that sits next to you that's com constantly tapping their foot and you can't focus in math or the relationship that you have with your siblings right now and they're always getting in your stuff or the you know dad's away and he's working a lot right now or mom's away and she's working a lot right now and, and I miss them and I didn't, don't really have a way to explain that but the most important thing that he said was I don't get to do what I want to do ever. And you said, of course, that while that's clearly not true, it's also clearly not the point. And I just, my whole reason for doing this video is to tell you that that is the entire point in this particular situation because he told you it was, he's telling you. And these little things that our kids resist with are not about brushing the teeth washing their faces, wash, getting a shower, um, you know, finishing their homework. It's, they're not cognitive choices to, you know, piss us off or not, you know, accomplish the tasks. They're saying a couple of things. I'm either, I'm overwhelmed. There's so much to do. And this is one more thing, but with toothbrushing, that's it. 
likely not it. And he told you, I don't get to choose. So he's choosing. So have that, that conversation. It's not, okay, what do I do then? It's have that conversation. I have been trying to make sure that you brush your teeth. And I probably, it sounds like, have taken away all the control out of you to make your own choices. You're 13. You, you know how to brush your teeth. I know you know how to brush your teeth. I know you don't want your teeth to get all yucky and rotten. You don't even have to go that far. I don't say rotten. I don't like to use fear. But I mean, I know you don't want to get cavities. I think that me pushing you and you not feeling like you had that control is just making none of it get done. Like, the, the task isn't getting done. And I, that doesn't make me feel good. I don't think that's what you want either. So I'm going to step back, and I want to hear from you. You don't have to tell me now. But I want to hear from you what... Um, I'm going to let you do the toothbrushing. Right? Give, just give that to him for the next week. And we can check in about that in, in a week. I just want you to do that right now. But I want to talk about how you can feel like you have some control in your life. And in this house, you're an important part. You contribute a lot. And now I'm just making all this up in my head, you know, maybe share with him that you're stressed and you were worried. And sometimes that makes you want to make sure everything gets done fast. Have that conversation with him because it's not about the toothbrushing. He's going to grow up and he's going to brush his teeth. He really is. And I know that we worry about fixing cavities now, but I want to worry about the fact that he doesn't feel like he gets to choose. Because our mental health for our kids, that's what we want to keep our eye on, right? It's not the little things. Um, and toothbrushing, while it's an important task, the, the teenage brain is... Is going to get they're going to go through this reconstruction and they're gonna get better they're gonna really get better at these kinds of things but their their executive function their ability to organize you know, if I go back to that thing about what's on their plate that's why I gave my daughter you know that ability to take it over and, and she created checklists because she had a lot on her plate and it was hard to organize and me coming in and be like did you do that did you get that are you ready here was not helping but if it's a relational thing, we can we can work on that. If it's a skills thing that we're really working on that skill, then yeah, give them some choice. Figure out. I don't. I just want to make sure it gets done, and I want you to make sure that you can monitor yourself and make sure that you've checked it off your bedtime list before you go, so that I don't. I don't even want to come in and ask. I just want to make sure that you get it done. If you, you know, maybe he needs a different kind of toothpaste or a different toothbrush. Probably not. You don't have to go there. But if it becomes an issue. Look for the deeper meaning, you guys. There's always something, especially with your teenagers, there's always, I mean with any kid, I shouldn't say especially, but there's always something deeper. I was watching, I don't know, was I watching it? A video with, um, it was some celebrity doing an interview, but they were talking about how the only thing that they wanted as a kid was just a hug. They wanted to be, they wanted to be felt. And it just like struck me with how much our kids sort of lose their ability to trust themselves because we take away their autonomy, not intentionally, but because we need to get stuff done. And, and what happens is we build up walls to the important things, and then they stop sharing with us, and then they resist, and we don't know how to, we think that that's like a pushback or an insult to our parenting, and that they're resisting authority, and really what they're saying is, this is too much. I want to control my own world, you know, to some degree, I want to feel like you understand me. I mean, maybe if you just go in and really connect with him on the fact that he feels like he doesn't have this control. Because you say it's clearly not true, but I'm telling you from his perspective, it is true. Now, the thing is that kids don't always have an um, accurate perspective, right? Because if you come in and you're like, you know, why aren't the teeth brushed? and he immediately feels stressed, he's going to shut down, and his perception of things is skewed. It's limited. Um, so it, it's not true because that's not our intentions, right? It's not necessarily that he doesn't ever get to choose. So I hear you on that. I'm a mom of a 13-year-old too, so I totally get that. But at the same time, I know that when my kid says, I don't feel heard or I don't feel like I have a choice that it's time to go deeper. 
Um, and this is really why I created my entire, uh, this is why I created Teach Through Love. It's to help you understand that when your kids tell you something like that, they really, really, really mean it. Um, and so having those conversations, because that will help you circle back to the toothbrush issue, the teeth brushing, and have um, a conversation that if he finally feels a little bit of relief that he's going to have some control over some things, like ask him. After you guys come together and you empathize, maybe then say, um, I want to know what you feel like you don't have control over. and I, wanna, I want you to feel more control. And so give me a list of some of those things. Let's talk about that. I just want to, I want us to hug our teenagers and know how actually, um, I didn't actually talk about the Dan Siegel book, but go get Brainstorm if you don't have it. Our kids are going, their brains are being completely rewired at this age. And they really do have a lack of, uh, they regress. They actually do have a lack of skills. So things that seem easy to us, like one, two, three, get that task done, no. Their brains are slower, they get stuck, and then they get overwhelmed, and they get anxious that they're not fulfilling that expectation, and then they begin to spiral. So it is actually that um, he may be feeling very overwhelmed as well by everything that is asked of him. So check in with your kids and ask them, hey, we're having a lot of challenges. I want the teeth to get brushed, or I really need the chores to get done, or I want to help, I need help getting our house cleaned up, and you agreed to do it this way, but that doesn't seem to be working. What's up, kiddo? How can we make this work for everybody? And if they pull back and they don't want to share anything with you, honor that, but then check back in, you know, the next day, or um, my daughter and I, we have a great relationship, but we also do a lot of writing back and forth to each other. Because sometimes it just, we actually don't do that as much anymore, but in the early teenage years, we definitely did that. So that's something that um, might help. You know, sometimes kids, especially boys, they don't necessarily always have, uh, I don't want to say the verbal skills, they have the verbal skills, but they may not have the form of expression that we're expecting um, to hear. You're like you don't have to we don't have to talk about this buddy you can write down some things that maybe come to your mind and then let's share let's come back and share ask your kids what it's like being um being your child what's it like being in relationship with me that's another one you can ask your kids when you feel like there's a lot of power struggles you might just get some information that helps you like clear a block that has been in the way and it was something as simple as your kid just felt like you know you thought I cannot tell you how many times my kid thought that I thought something about her that wasn't true and it was just based on you know my reactions and um, misunderstandings and miscommunications but let's just really try to see it from from their um, view Sharon saying keep showing up for them absolutely all right you guys I want to end it there I'm gonna come back on um, as always, for another Q&A, post your questions. When I get, uh, when I see something that really speaks to me, I definitely jump on, but sometimes they're scheduled as well. So just keep your eyes out on the page, on the group page for more. And I would love to keep the conversation going. So let's keep talking in the comments until next time. All right, you guys, see you soon.